Hey guys, this is Sharad with Resimply, host of the Resimply podcast, bringing you another super special guest, Linda Mekesak, on this podcast. Linda, welcome to Resimply podcast. How are you? Thank you. I am super happy to be here. Thanks for asking me. Absolutely. My pleasure. Linda, tell us a little bit about yourself. Where do you live? And how are you related to real estate investing or real estate business? So I actually live in Texas, although I'm not here all the time. I'm all over the place between Texas, Oklahoma, Montana, Missouri, and California. Travel quite a bit for businesses and investments that we have in other locations. But I, I live and have always lived in Texas. And I got in the real estate business in the late 80s, early 90s, because I needed to make some money. And actually got in on the real estate sales side because my husband was running restaurants and nightclubs. And we actually had to sell one for $600,000 less than we owed against it. So it, oh, wow. it created an immediate have to, which I always say the worst thing that happens to you winds up being the greatest blessing that happens to you if you give it long enough and you learn what you need to learn from it. So that okay. got me into real estate sales and Robert Kiyosaki's book, Cash flow quadrant gave us the answers of how to be prepared in the future so that we didn't have a gradually and suddenly that disrupted our life like that one did, uh, that economy crash in Texas did in the late 80s, early 90s. Yeah, that's uh, 600,000. That's a lot of money uh, that <laughs> yes. you want more than, um, yeah, sorry. I mean, yeah, you're, but you're absolutely right. Our greatest blessings come from the greatest failures that we have if we're willing to take them as a learning opportunity. Yeah. So what is it that you're doing now in real estate? What kind of investing are you doing now? Okay. So um yes, we have we're we have 65 single family homes. We've had as many as 200 before. We actually wrote the book Hold how to find, buy, and rent houses to build wealth. So our strategy has always been to hold properties because we wanted money in the future so that we were working because we had to, not, I mean, because we wanted to, not because we had to. So uh, we started buying, actually, we started buying before we even got out of that $600,000 in debt. We eventually got that $600,000 paid back because back then the banks would actually work with you and discount the notes if you could figure out how to scrape up the cash. So we did eventually climb out of that, that debt without filing bankruptcy, which helped us be able to, you know, then go ahead and eventually borrow money and things like that. But we started buying even before we got out of that debt. I found, I always say you're either, you have the money, you're either living in it, driving it, eating it, wearing it, or somebody else has it. And in this case, uh, a builder that I worked with, I asked him to partner because we couldn't get financing and we didn't have the money. And he did on the first three transactions. So one of them we flipped out of and the other two we held. And then when we split up our partnership with him, we let him pick which house he wanted to keep. And we have that original second property that we bought. And it pays us more than my husband's social security does for over 40 years of working. So that's the power of investing. And we right. had in the 2008, 2009, we bought lots of properties on the foreclosure steps but we're down to 65 uh, single families and we have 31 vacation rentals. We just closed this week uh, selling 25 of those properties to Hilton vacation properties. So we are now down to actually five, but we have four lots. And so we're going to go back and build that portfolio back up again and okay. look for another buyer eventually. So we have single families. We have seven commercial buildings. All of our commercial buildings have one of our businesses in them as a tenant. It's okay. either tenant or a portion of the tenants. And then we have bought some land um, and made great money on that. And then we have other businesses that are cash flow businesses, but investing in single family, uh, short-term rentals and commercial. Got it. Yeah. Land. No, this is great, Linda. You know, I want to go back and you said, so you started buying houses even when you had that $600,000 $600, uh, debt that you owed, right? right. Mm -hmm. That must have been, and this is like where the $600,000 debt was about 20, 25 years ago, right? Or 20, 30 years Maybe ago? Maybe a little bit more. It was actually uh, in the late 80s. Okay. And we were still paying it off in the early 90s. So adjusted for inflation, that would be like 1.2, 1.5 million dollars. Uh, so that's, that's a lot of money that you owed. Yeah. What was it about real estate where you felt like, okay, 
I'm in the hole for in if we're talking today's dollars, I just say million dollars. Mm-hmm. I'm in the hole for million dollars, but I still believe in this asset class so much. I still believe in this business so much that I'm gonna not get demotivated by that million dollar, you know, debt th- that I have, and I'm just gonna keep moving forward buying more real estate. What was that thought process like? I think it gives you a have to when you start having to downsize, you have two options when something like that happens to you. It is a kick in the gut and you do need a minute to catch your breath. But I also think it kind of gives you a bigger have to real quick because Mm. that was not a fun place to be. We went from driving nice cars to crappy cars and, you know, just, um, you know, so many things change that you're like, okay, this, this didn't work. How do we never be in this position again? So I think you go either find people who have come out of a situation like that and let them tell you their story so that you see what's possible. Or for us, we found books. We went and started reading Rich Dad, Poor Dad, Cashflow Quadrant. And when we read Cashflow Quadrant, we realized our problem was all of our money came from the left side of the quadrant, which was being self-employed. My husband was self-employed in the restaurant and nightclub business. And wealthy people that don't have stuff happen to them quite like that, they're more prepared. They have money coming in from the other side, which is businesses or which are people making you money or assets. And we had no assets. So the good news is we had nothing to lose. We didn't lose all of our assets. We didn't have any. We just lost all of our cash flow. So we really just needed to go find a, a, a way to build cash flow. And you know, some, I don't, I'd never made more than minimum wage other than waitressing and bartending at that time. So I honestly didn't know what skills I had or what I could do. And it was my husband who suggested that I sell real estate. And it was because a mentor of his told him a long time ago, the way you get wealthy is real estate. Now, my husband misunderstood him. I'm sure the man meant buy some, build some. Right best in some, he didn't mean get a wife and get her to sell some. Yeah. <laughs> Although he either misunderstood or misled me one or the other. I think he mm. misunderstood, but it was a perfect fit because in real estate sales there, you get to decide how much your value is and how much you make. Right. And so it was a perfect opportunity. I didn't do well in the very beginning. I only made like $3,000 gross. Jimmy said, this is gross. I paid 17 for you to make three. This is not helping, but it's because back then there was no training, no education, Once I went out and found trainers and other people who were producing at a higher level, you know, anything in the world you want to do, somebody else has already done it. Yeah. All you have to do is go find those people or listen to podcasts like you have here, listen to the stories. And if those people can do it, you can do it too. And that's what we did. We just started reading books and finding people and trying to put together what did we need to do differently moving forward so that we would never be in that kind of position again if at all possible. So I think yeah. that's, you know, I think that's why, because I I, w- I read books that gave me hope or i talked to people who had lost everything and came back even stronger. So I think you have to connect to something that gives you some kind of hope or inspiration and just learn that anything that happens, it's just, it's just a lesson that you needed to get to make you be better and stronger and everything moving forward. And it's not, it's not the end all to everything. It actually can be the the thing that catapults you into a different kind of success in the future. Absolutely. And I, I just want to take a moment and first of all, say congratulations on all the success you've had. And Thank what you. an inspiring story to be in that debt and then just be, have this firm belief and just know that, hey, we have to get out rather than just look at it and be, you know, depressed about it. You said, no, we're going to just get up move forward. Very, very inspiring. Thank you for sharing that story. Yeah, my pleasure. So you have like decades of experience now, when you look back at everything you've done, you know, you know, what are some of the things that as far as, you know, real estate investing is concerned that you look back and say, wow, I'm so glad I did this thing in real estate investing. The only thing I wish is if I could go back, I'd done more of what would you say? (laughs) investing more investing (laughs) buy Um, more yeah buy more um and you know uh, maybe even try a few different things you know we kind of stayed in the single family homes until we branched into this uh to the uh, short-term rentals and i think it's kind of fun 
I like new things. I like new challenges and new ideas. So it would have been fun to maybe diversify, you know, and do more. We did a few apartments, but we flipped the the one set of apartments we had after we got them fixed up. But, you know, maybe just try a few more other things. But I think always, you know, the way our lives get really big is we make commitments that are scary. And because they're scary, the reason they're scary is because we don't really have all the answers of how to do it. And give me, that's what give me an example of that that you made in your life. Uh, well, buying that first house when we were still in debt and right. we really didn't know anything about real estate investing. I'd never read a book on real estate investing. We just penciled out the numbers and prayed they were right. So wow. I think that was scary, you know, hiring right. people in my real estate business and, you know, doing short term rentals that were all the way in Missouri when we live in Texas, every single thing. We never had all the answers when we started. And I think that's what keeps a lot of people from starting is they're afraid that they don't know how to do it, but you will figure out the how <laughs> yeah, because you have to mostly. But uh, so I just always say the answer is more. I would have, you know, I would have, because so much of what you get out of the whole journey is who you become in the trying, right? And so that's been the best part. And the only way you're going to become who, who all you can become is to go out there and try more and do more, right. you know, try to achieve more. And so I always say that that is the thing I would do. I, I may also, um, you know, think, uh, you know, more about how do I scale it bigger? Like we pretty much did everything on very limited number of people that worked for us instead of thinking bigger and saying, how do we make this like as big as it can be? We let it be as big as we could be. Whereas if I could just let it be as big as it could be, then it who knows how big it could have been, right? What and was that, the limiting factor with that? You know, I think just my own vision. You know, if I could have been around other people who actually said, oh, we not only buy single family homes here, we do it in this state and that state. And, the, you know, and I could have saw a model then I probably yeah. would because I'm a modeler. You give Got me it, a yeah. or a thing, I'm going to follow it, right? And I'm probably going to fail along the way, but at least I'm going to try to do what you tell me that I'm supposed to do. So I think that would be the only thing. I don't really, I think that would be it. I would probably just think a little bit bigger um, about it and probably, you know, hire more people to do it because we ran it really on a few people, great people, fantastic people. Mm -hmm. But we could have actually scaled them all probably a lot more and a lot bigger had we been thinking a little bit bigger. How are you changing that now? So if you're looking ahead, what are you doing now to change that? Well, the biggest difference now from what we do now that we didn't know then is we find the right who's. Everything about scaling is the right who's because you can only do so much. We all, God right. only gave us 24 hours. We didn't get 48. I wish we did, but we didn't. So how do I leverage my time, money, and my resources. And people are the one of the highest forms. They're the hardest, but they're one of the highest forms of leverage is talented people. So now focusing more on getting more talented people in my life that they're looking for their opportunity and we go collaborate with them to do it. In other words, maybe it's a partnership, maybe they do the work and we're just, um, you know, kind of more of the coaches with them. We're not doing so much of all the things we've done in the past, right? We're yeah. not looking for deals that are going to pay off in 20 years now. We're looking for cash flow businesses and, you know, doing stuff like that. So I think the who is what matters the difference. That's the difference between now and back then. We yeah, are absolutely. looking for talented people we can do things with now. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, isn't there saying like, if you want to go fast, go alone, if you want to go far. Or go yeah. with others. Go with others. Do you, do you have an example of uh, one of the who's that, comes to your mind that you've recently brought into your business and, you know, maybe recent that you haven't like kind of seen results from, but who that you've had in your business that you're super excited about? Yeah. Well, there's several and pretty much uh, what we're excited about right now is we're working on a program called Made for More and it's for okay. real estate agents who want to move from that left side of the quadrant of self-employed to the right side and uh, helping them leverage through people to build their teams and then to go on to build assets and businesses and things that actually will throw off that money, passive money and those multiple streams of income. But in the in that world, my son joined probably about, gosh, I don't even know how many years ago, seven, eight years ago, after he graduated from Baylor University. 
And it's fun to watch talented people. He's put an amazing team around him that knows, you know, training in the online world and all the things that, you know, the world has moved to. And that's fun and exciting because for the first time in my life, I have the knowledge and information, but I know how to do none of the other. And used to, Mm. I would have never done anything that I couldn't do every piece of it if I had to. So that's been fun. And then in our real estate world of offices and, you know, someone to take over my real estate sales team, you know, just finding those key people that are more, you know, kind of an empire builder that actually you know, want to grow something and you can bring them along and and make their life get better, either equity opportunities or something with them so that they, their life gets big at the same time as yours. Right. So tell me a little bit more about the program that you're talking about for the agents to bring, the, uh, so to bring them from like the left side of the quadrant to the right side of the quadrant. So uh, real estate agents, you know, they're self-employed, mm-hmm. they go out, get listings, that's how they make their money. So what? how are you helping them to generate asset, uh, revenue generating assets. Yeah. Well, one of the first, if you look on the right side of the quadrant, one of the first ways to build uh, wealth or at the, or that the wealthy get wealthy is businesses. Well, it's not a business if you have to get up every day and do it. Right. Mm-hmm. So that's the kind of where we step in, in the first part and help agents do that. How do you leverage through people Number one, so you get your cash flow up and you don't have a revolving door. And then number two, how do you then make your world big enough? Because if your world doesn't get big enough, talented people don't stay in it. They go become you somewhere else. But if you mm-hmm. can figure out a way to for them to get what they want at the same time you're getting what you want and you want to tie them in and keep them with you forever, then you guys can go build other things together. So um, it's really about... Um, teaching them to make their world big enough and learning how to identify the right kind of talent and then them not running that talent off. You know, uh, how do you act in such a way? How do you go out and build your world big enough that a real talented person who might've been you 10 years ago, doesn't feel like they have to leave you to get what they want. Absolutely. And I'm sure it applies to not only real estate agents, but just any person that wants to go from, you know, having a job to becoming, you know, financially independent. Let me ask you this, like, what are some of the differences that you notice in the people that get to the right side of the quadrant versus the ones that stay on the left side? What do you mean? What is the biggest difference that happens in their life or what, no, what, what is the difference? Doing? So let's say, let's say if you have two people that you're coaching, right? One yeah. person that you coach, that person gets to the right quadrant, you know, invest is investing in business and generating uh, passive income or income from businesses. One person, you know, has the motivation, but doesn't actually end up making the leap. What do you mm-hmm. notice in your experience? Like the differences, is it in their attitude? Is it in their resources? What, what do you notice that happens? Is there limiting belief? It could be. And I think we all have limiting beliefs. I mean, I don't think any of us escape that. It's just whether we're willing to let that cost us what it actually will cost us. But I think the biggest difference is, you know, the, the person that doesn't do it either gets stuck somewhere and is unwilling to lean in and master the things they need to master to do it, learn what they need to learn to do it. Or I always say when the pain of staying where you are is great enough, you'll let go and go where you, where the brighter future is. But until the pain went until the pain is great enough, see the pain was great for me, but how do you get the pain to be there when everything's great? You know, to be honest with you, when I was at the top of my sales game, I had to decide to turn that over to someone else that I just knew in my mind would tear it apart. (laughs) No way they could keep it going for 20 plus years so that I could go build bigger investments and opportunities, right? That was scary. But the pain of not getting to have that challenge was great enough that I, that I, even in the fear, I was willing to let go. And I think yeah. a lot of people don't want to let go of comfort to get yeah. uncomfortable yeah. and you have to get uncomfortable to go build big lives and, and have big experiences. But, you know, one of the things that drives me is I've learned that the joy is in who you become learning how to do all this stuff and the people you meet and the new people that you get to hang out with and the new you know, experiences you have. 
but you don't know that until you get there. Right. And so, you know, hanging around people, that's why hanging around people that have it make you see what's possible. And I think if, if you don't do enough of that, it's real easy to get stuck in complacency and yeah. really not go make those big commitments that are scary. Yeah, no, I, I absolutely agree, Linda. Um, so let me ask you, you have so many things that you're doing, you know, you have incredible success, absolutely inspiring story. What's your why? Like, why are you doing these things? Yeah. Well, uh, Dan Sullivan says there's two kinds of entrepreneurs. There's one entrepreneur that is, uh, we've tagged it. He didn't give it a name. We gave it this name, an achievement entrepreneur. And that entrepreneur, when they hit a certain level of something, they say, oh, that's awesome. I wonder what else I can achieve. And they go out to achieve more, right? That's kind of the way they're wired. And then there's another entrepreneur and neither one are right or wrong. They're just categories. The other entrepreneur is what I like to call a lifestyle entrepreneur. They are after a certain dollar, a certain lifestyle, a certain car, a certain house, whatever. And when they get there, their thought is to stop doing what they're doing, right? And just enjoy yeah. what they've done, maybe do golfing or charity work. Nothing wrong with that, right? But I believe that the more success you have, the more you get to do only the things that give you energy and light you up. And why would I stop that? Yeah. Now I get the joy of watching other people succeed and win. And I get to be along for the journey and the ride and enjoy it. And I'm a solopreneur. So you're hearing somebody say this, that it's so much easier for me just to go perform than it is to do what I'm telling you here. But there's joy in building something big enough that other people get to bring their talents and unique gifts into and watch the magic that happens. So I think either you have to kind of like to see what else you can achieve. And I think you, you, you sh realize, should realize that that's how you become who you become. And who do we know? How do we know that we've become all we can become? You don't know if you don't try. Right. And so, yeah. so for me, it's just part of what I love to do. I love to achieve. I know I don't want to do the things that don't give me energy anymore. And I will find someone else that that gives energy to. Right. They'll yeah. love it. And they, they'll think, thank you. I love this. But for me, I only want to do the parts I love. And I want to bring other people along on this journey because I think that's why we all have success. I don't think we all have success just to go sit down and enjoy our success. I think we get our lessons and our uh, opportunities and our success so that we can go back and find another person that would love to do the same thing. So I think part of significance is when you get to a certain level I've never met an entrepreneur that didn't really enjoy helping other people now do what they've done. So I think that's kind of the next level is the significance of trying to go help other people do that want to want to go on the same journey. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Once I absolutely agree. Once you get to a certain level, then everything you're doing, it becomes bigger than like just you and your immediate family. Yes. Then it, as you have team members, it's so, it's such a grateful feeling to be able to impact other people's life. It comes yeah. with a sense of responsibility that, oh, wow, I'm not no longer just responsible for my life and my immediate family. I'm responsible for these people, these strangers that I hired. Now they become almost like an extended family. And then all the decisions that you make is not only impacting you, it's impacting other people. I'm sure you have go through the same feeling and seeing yeah. the team members in your company, in your community grow. And you're like, wow, just sometimes you sit back and like, oh, I, I can't believe like, you know, we're able to something about build and it's able to have such a impactful, uh, such a huge impact in their lives. Right. Yeah. And I think if we weren't meant to do it, it wouldn't feel so great when we did. That but is so true. So great. Oh my God. That you is know, so true. it's part of what we're supposed to be doing. Yeah. Absolutely. How do you deal with, I'm curious, because it's, you know, I'm, I'm sure as an entrepreneur, you go through some of these days where you feel low energy, you know, you question uh, kind of things you're doing, and then you go through, hey, am I, am I doing the right thing? Am I making the right decision? How do you, do you work with, a, are you working with a coach or do you lean into, you know, your close set of friends? How do you deal with some of those uh, rough days? Well, first thing I do is ask, is there something in my life that's sucking energy from me? If, is it a person mm. or is it an activity? And if it's that, I'll get rid of it. 
Interesting. But if it's not, I know by now, I know what things inspire me and I know what I need to do. And yes, I do have coaches always. Um, so usually if I can get a coaching session or go to a, you know, a mastermind or something that I'm in, it changes everything quickly. Yeah. I'm inspired again. I'm ready to go. I don't, you know, I don't feel like I stay down very long because I've learned how to, you know, okay, what do I need to do? Do I need to exercise? Do I need to go hang out with somebody who inspires me? What do I need to call somebody? What's going on? So I think you got to learn that a little bit about yourself so that you learn how to get yourself out of it. Uh, or am I doing something that I don't love to do? And if I am, yeah. who would love to do that? And I'm not going to do that yeah. very long. Or if it's a person, I'm not going to have that person in my life very long because it's just not, life's too short. And it's, I don't want to do it, right? Yeah. I've had plenty of those for too long until I learned, okay, I need to do something about this. Absolutely. But yeah, I think that's the main thing. And then, you know, I'm inspired by learning. So what inspires you? You know, I think Tony Robbins and Mel Robbins both said the same thing. Change your state. Well, you got to know what to change your state to. I know what to change my state to. It's education, learning, high-minded people, something, uh, or right. serve someone. Sometimes I just, I need to stop looking at my navel and look at somebody else and say, how can I help you? Because I always feel good when I help somebody else. Absolutely. No, this is such a, such a great message that you shared. Yeah, absolutely love that. I, I love the fact that, you know, you're leaning into, you're figuring out, okay, what is it that is making me feel this way? Is it an activity? Is it a person? If it's an activity, let's go find someone who can take this activity. There's always people, there might be something that you absolutely hate to do. If you hate filing your taxes, for example, there's accountant out there that absolutely love that. You know, yeah. if you hate cold calling, there are people out there that absolutely love cold calling. So you got to find people, uh, things that are sucking energy. There are people that the same activity gives them energy. And if there's someone in your life that draining your energy, then you need to move on from that person. Well, that's, I, I love that answer. Well, and sometimes too, I always, if I'm not doing something that I know is super important. So here's a good example. My trainer was after me forever to stretch. Well, I have a philosophy that says if I was going to do it, I would have already. So mm. if it's important, I got to say, why am I not doing that? You know, okay. Well, I just now... What I do is, okay, I, if I was going to do it, if it was easy for me or I loved it, I would have already done it. He wouldn't have had to tell me more than two times. Yeah. So how can I or who can? So, for example, he stayed after me and after me about stretching. I wouldn't do it, wouldn't do it, wouldn't do it. And I'm a health person. I know that's important. So I said, okay, Linda, you would have done this already if you were going to. How could you get this done? And I went and found a stretch lab and they stretch me. You know, or wow. if stuck on something, I say, okay, who could do this? Because I'm not doing it. Uh, you know, I just said to my assistant not too long ago, I really want to talk to some of our key people that have been through our leadership academy. Will you, first I told her to let that put their name on my calendar and I would call them. Guess what? Every week I'd have task overdue, task overdue. Well, it sucks to have calendar that says task overdue all the time. So I called her back into my office and said, look, if I was going to do this this way, I would have already, let's change it up. I want you to set the appointment and they call me at the designated time. Guess what? I've never missed a call since. So that. instead of staying stuck on why you're not doing it or beating yourself up to say, you got to do it. You got to do it. Get it. Okay. Yeah. How get it done? What would work? And so rethinking what would work cause you to do what you need to do yeah linda i absolutely love that about you you're just so clear about if i haven't done this rather than like being down about it let's figure out why didn't i do this and let's figure out okay i need to do this if i'm not going to do it let's figure out who's going to do this i right. absolutely love that like you're living i'm sure you've read the book who not how by dan sullivan <laughs> Of yeah. course. It's yes. like, it seems like you're absolutely living by that book. Like it just, Hey, this is something that needs to be done. If I'm not going to do it, like even just talking about like stretching, you went and like, you're not going to stretch on your, you went to a place, they're going to help you stretch. That's yeah. like such a fantastic example of that. I absolutely love that. And you know, one thing I've noticed is I have this like amazing opportunity. So grateful, so blessed that I get to interview, you know, uh, great people like yourself. And one thing I've noticed, people that are successful is they they know what needs to be done and they figure out a way to get it done. 
Yeah. They're not going to let anything get in their way. They're just about so action oriented. And you know, another thing I love about what you do is you have a such a, a short feedback loop. You're not giving yourself like on your calendar, the example that you were talking about, it's not like you're giving yourself one, two years to figure it out. Like <laughs> you saw it after a couple of weeks, you're like, okay, this is not working out. This needs to happen. Let's figure out who can help me do this and let's just yeah. get it done. That's yeah. such a great thing. It's like, we need to take action. We need to get to the end result. Let's figure it out. If I'm not going to get there, who's going to get me there? You yeah. know, I, I love mm -hmm. that. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, no. My pleasure. Yeah. All right. We want to pivot into the next segment of our podcast. What do you do for fun? You have so many things you're doing. What do you do for fun? Okay. So, uh, you know, our kids are all grown and we have grandkids. So that's all fun for me. We stopped uh, quite a few years ago doing a lot of gifts and now we do experiences. I love that. So for example, two days from now, my youngest son and his wife are going with us to Greece on a uh, yacht with John Maxwell to walk where Paul walked. Well, that's an experience that they will remember forever, right? Yeah. So anybody that is key in my life, and especially my family, I'm looking for ways that we can do some experiences that they will remember way longer than what I got them for Christmas last year, right? Absolutely. So that's one yeah. way. I love pickleball. <laughs> oh my God. You and me both, Linda. Yeah. I love you pickleball. And me both. I yeah. wish I had more time to play it, but I love pickleball because I travel so much. I've got to, I have to get things set up in every location. Like in Montana, we just bought a house in yeah. Whitefish a couple Christmases ago. And I'm working on who's my pickleball players yeah. that, that I can have a set thing. Who's my trainer. But I, I love pickleball. I love exercise. I love reading and learning about health. That's my second love is biohacking and becoming the CEO of your own, you know, health. Yeah that kind of stuff. I love reading, you know, just uh, not enough time for all the things. We love travel. You know, we just, yeah. Uh, yeah. Really quick on the pickleball. I love pickleball. I played <laughs> a league last night. Are you pretty competitive? Uh, I'm, I think so. Yeah. What's your duper rating if you don't mind sharing? What's my what? Duper rating or you don't like, you don't play in any competitive leagues. Like, oh, no. I, yeah. I, you know, what's so funny is I'm one of those that I set a really high, stupid, silly goal right off the bat. And I'm like, okay, are there Olympics for pickleball or is there some <laughs> kind of tournament? So I have that still on my list, but I haven't done anything about it because nice. I'm not consistent enough to be on somebody's oh. team or league. Yeah, I yeah. Have a calendar every Wednesday because some ladies play at the country club here. Got it, got but it. But I think I've only made it once since yeah. I, my assistant put that a standing thing in my calendar because I've always got something else going on. Oh, I can totally imagine you setting a goal for yourself and then you're <laughs> hiding the best coach out there to yeah. help you improve and get you ready for the Olympics. I love that. <laughs> you obviously read a lot. You love reading. If you look back, what's the one book where you look back and say that this book had the biggest impact in my life? It could be a business book. It could be a personal book or one of each. Gosh, there's so many because I contribute so much of my getting on this journey of, you know, self-help and, you know, cause so many times the problem that we all have is the obstacle in the way is us. It's not mm -hmm. anything else. It's not outside stuff. It's us, our thoughts, our beliefs, our perspectives. And so sometimes you have to spend time working on that. So Jim Rohn has always been one of my heroes uh, Mark Victor Hansen, Nito Cobain, all the old motivational right. people that just inspire you to realize that no matter where you start in life, you know, anything's a possibility if you're willing to put in the work to, to on yourself and the activity to get it done. So I would say, you know, I probably have books in each of those categories, but I have to say in the beginning, it would have had to be cash flow quadrant because yeah. We didn't know about money. We we just thought you just went and got a way to make a lot of money. And my husband was making a lot of money in the restaurant business, but we were blowing all of it. And we didn't know yeah. anything about moving our income to the right side of the quadrant and having multiple streams of income. So I would have to say cash flow quadrant because it set us on the journey to build the wealth. And then to go to the next level, it's who, not how. You know, on how. Yeah. and you know, I'm in, I'm featured in 10 X is easier than two X, which is the other book by Dan and Dr. Ben Hardy. And I, I think that's another concept that when people get their arms around that and you realize that as fast as you possibly can, that's, you're going to build a big life. 
because Absolutely. everybody mm -hmm. tends to think in the form of 2X. And that's just a little bit more than I did last year. And most of what I did last year will work this next year to 2X me. But right. you have to throw all things out the window and stretch and do uncomfortable things to get to 10X, right? So, Absolutely. I mean, each book has had a certain impact because of where I was and what I needed that Makes time. Makes sense, yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It makes sense. Um, I, I agree. Like you're in different seasons of your life. You need a different book to get you from the level where you stuck at to the next level. Yeah, yeah. All, all three books that you mentioned, absolutely amazing books. All right. Final question. If you could spend a day with anyone, <laughs> dead or alive, who would you want to spend the day with and why? Gosh, that's a hard question. Um, I'm going to set my faith aside uh, because everybody probably says that, but um that's really, gosh, dead or alive. Wow. Um, you know, wow. <laughs> that's a hard, that's a really hard question. Well, I'm going to spend time with John Maxwell this week, so I don't get to say him, which he's one of my heroes. Um, you know, I loved Jim Rohn and yeah. he was so inspiring to me. And I actually um, got to inter introduce him at a, at a conference and have breakfast and lunch with him. But I think he was such an inspiring, simple man that yeah. um, I probably would spend more time with him if I could. But there's so many. I mean, Absolutely, yeah. anybody in the world, I usually like to go for people who've accomplished at a high level wherever I'm trying to enter. So today's world is um, the online world. So, uh, you know, I, I have heroes in that, like uh, Amy Porterfield, uh, Russell Brunson, people that are have really mastered Absolutely. the online world. So I would probably go for one of them too, because yeah. uh, I learned by modeling people. Absolutely. Great answers, Minda. All right. Anyone listening to this absolutely inspiring interview, if they want to connect with you, what's the best way for them to find you? Uh, well, you can go for madeformore.com slash go, and that will hook you up with our Made for More newsletter that we put uh -huh. out. And then you can always look at lindamckissick.com, which is M-C-K-I-S-S-A-C-K.com, because everything is pointed there also. Perfect. We'll put all of those links in the show notes. Linda, thank you so much for coming on the podcast and sharing your incredible story. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. My pleasure. Thank you and have a happy holiday. <laughs> thank you. You too.